and welcome to this Ubiquity University course on transformational leadership, strategy and governance. My name is Peter Merry and I'm looking forward to spending the next few weeks with you on this course. I'm uh, English, I have uh, live in the Netherlands, been there for the last 14 years or so. Um, have a background actually originally in studying languages, which gave me a bit of the international perspective on things. In terms of my pathway into this subject and the kind of values that Ubiquity stands for, it probably all starts when my mother gave me a book when I was around 20 years old by a man called Fritz Schumacher called Small is Beautiful. And in that book, he questions the whole current economic system and suggests that there is an alternative way of thinking about things that will be better for both people and planet. And that started my mind thinking. And then there were a number of steps along the way which got me here, which was a combination of working in theatre uh, for a while, both in England and in Paris, uh, spending a year in Ghana in West Africa, uh, where I was also studying development economics and really trying to understand what the context was for all the decisions that were being made in the world. And there was a key moment uh, that happened while I was out there, which is <clears throat> the school in a very rural area um, couldn't really, the people who were coming, the kids who were coming couldn't really afford to pay the school fees. So they would pay in chickens or goats or other things and the school would get by and manage even though there were minimal textbooks and things. But then Ghana was going through a major structural adjustment program, which was a program designed by the World Bank and International Monetary Fund to make it more economically efficient. And that involved cutting uh, public spending, including uh, spending on the, on the education system. So at some point, the school was forced by the government to enforce the payment of school fees, which most children couldn't afford and their families. So the day that they enforced that, the rule they, they, they laid down was that if you couldn't pay uh, your school fee, then you wouldn't be allowed into the dining hall. And given that this was a, a boarding school because of the large catchment area where the kids would sleep overnight, that would have meant the end of the education for a large number of the children at the school. And the day that they enforced that rule, a number of the students basically rebelled, went into town, got a little drunk, came back and burnt down the school. So there I was in northern Ghana with a burnt down school, seeing a chain of events that led from a, a kind of macroeconomic uh, uh, model saying that, well, in order for Ghana to do better, it must do this and this and this, leading to this very real situation on the ground. And at that point, I guess I made a decision to commit my life to looking at how to change the big global economic contexts to make sure that that kind of thing didn't happen again. People were able to get a decent education and we were able to value the things that are important in life rather than just organizing everything according to some abstract concepts around money. So that took me back uh, to the UK where I got involved in green politics for a while. I uh, did a master's degree in human ecology, trying to understand the relationship between people and the environment. It was a transdisciplinary study that helped me to connect up many different pieces of the puzzle. And then I moved into the world of training and education, combining theatre with the issues uh, of the time, particularly intercultural learning, look at how, how do different people from different contexts, how can they communicate more effectively and work together better. And, and then I threw myself into looking at organizations because I had a feeling that the, the organizations, particularly the big organizations of our time, who we were often criticizing from the circles that I moved in, had to play an important role in the transition. And I needed to learn how these organizations worked. And so I started doing organizational consulting um, and training. Uh, using an integral approach, which you'll have heard something about already, I expect, and I'll be telling you more about during this course. Um, with great success, working with some of the major multinational corporations on uh, transition strategies that really honored the role of people in the organization and try to create a healthy culture and working environment in the organizations themselves. 
At the same time, I established an organization in the Netherlands called the Center for Human Emergence. And uh, we dedicated it to really experimenting with what would it mean to create an organization that reflected the values we cared about and that was able to make an impact in the world. And I led that organization for seven years uh, and learned a huge amount about how you could start to do things differently and uh, make a positive impact while making a living at the same time. So a lot of the insights that I share with you in this course come from that hands-on experience and more recently from the experience of working with Ubiquity University and helping to lead Ubiquity as the organization's chief innovation officer. So all of that kind of comes together in a context of what are the most uh, appropriate approaches to leadership, to thinking about how we go about our business in strategic terms and to the way we organize ourselves that are best going to serve the world at this time, taking into account the kind of life conditions that we're in with a rapidly changing, complexifying world and the kind of issues that we need to solve that are facing us at this time. So let me frame a little bit about why I think this course is so important at this time. And the slide that you're looking at really summarizes it. You can see over the last 250 years or so how a number of key factors in, in society and on the planet have accelerated over the last 50 years or so. So they were fairly stable for 200 years and we're looking at things like uh, fish stock depletion, forest depletion, population growth, uh, amount of foreign investment, all sorts of different factors that were put together in this graph by the new scientist. Um, and they were all kind of accelerating almost vertically, having been horizontal for a, a long time in their development here. And what that tells us is that we're at a particular time on the planet, a particular time of transition that isn't a normal stable time, but is really a, a time of major shift. Somebody once uh, mentioned a nice quote, which is, this isn't an era of change. This is really a change of eras. And when we're in that kind of context, we have to think very carefully about our strategies for organization and leadership, because it's a very different context to be organizing ourselves and trying to work out how to live than when you're in the more stable period, let's say, where the line is flat there. So this course is really designed to start to equip us with the skills and the qualities and the perspectives that help us to navigate through this particularly complex time in human history. So here's another way of looking at it. The S-curves that you can see here track a very traditional way of understanding how change works. And if you look at the, the lower kind of brown one that's emerging up, a set of solutions or a way of thinking um, evolves in response to a set of problems. We try to solve a set of problems with a set of solutions and then they work for a while. But in those problems, uh, in those solutions that we originally bring in are the seeds of the next set of problems. So you, you, know, you solve your problems, things are going well, and then at some point new problems start to emerge and the original solutions are no longer adequate for dealing with that new set of problems. And the, the way of coping of the structure and the society starts to move into decline. And it's at that point that people begin to get a feeling that it's not quite right anymore, that things aren't going well anymore. And, and you start to get innovation coming out at the bottom of that new S-curve. People starting to think in new ways, to critique the old system, to come up with new experiments and ways of doing things often under the radar screen to, to start with because they're not developed enough to be able to take over the helm of running our organizations or our societies. But that in innovation is very important. But the fact that we begin to feel that the ways we've been doing things don't really work anymore, and we also know that we haven't developed anything new that's capable of doing things differently, puts us in this chaos point. And this point of knowing that we haven't got the solutions and knowing that we're somehow not able to cope effectively with the life conditions that we're facing. So this is the context that we're in now 
globally as humanity, looking to work out what's the next stage in our development. And being in this change context requires a very different approach to leadership, strategy and governance uh, than the way things have been done up until now. So this is what the course is really designed to do to help us think through how do we really engage the world at this particular time in human history. The first one here, to express clearly the nature of transformation as compared to other types of change. So what we want is that by the end of the course, you are able to distinguish different kinds of change to be able to, and to be able to understand this particular change context that's, that we're in that's really requiring a significant transformational change rather than just a slight improvement in the current state of affairs. The second point, which is that we want you to be able to reflect constructively on your own and others' leadership capacity. So to have a language and maps to help you uh, understand what the different elements of leadership are and where some of your strengths might be, what you might want to improve, to have a, a language to be able to engage in a conversation and a reflection about leadership. The third point to be able to actively improve your own transformational leadership capacity by taking concrete steps. So that as you leave here, you are able to be a more effective leader because you've got some of the tools that are gonna enable you to operate more effectively in this particular change climate. Fourthly, to be able to analyze and describe an organization in terms of its level of development and agility. So what we're also looking at is not just the leader's role, but how do we design our organizations to be able to operate effectively in this kind of context that I just described earlier. Um, so you should be able by the end of the course to look at an organization, to get a sense of it and evaluate how fit it is for the current context and the future that we're moving into. Fifthly, to be able to choose the appropriate implementation tools for large scale collaboration. So this kind of change requires people working together from many different contexts. And there are ways you can do that within organizations and across organizations, different tools. And during the course, we're gonna be offering you some different approaches that you can actually take and implement in your own contexts to be able to stimulate the level of change that's needed. And finally, you should be able to design a strategy for enhancing the transformational quality of leadership and governance in an organization. So you'll have the tools, the language, the maps, the frameworks, the potential interventions to be able to think through how are we going to create the level of change that's needed in this community, in this group, in this organization, or more broadly, in the society. So those are the main outcomes that we're hoping to achieve with the course. And now if we move on to look at some of the topics that we're wanting to cover on the course, they include transformation and change. So an understanding of change. You know, a lot of people will talk very generally about change, but the question is what kind of change? What kind of change is appropriate for what kind of context? And then particularly zooming in on transformation on this more uh, significant non-linear kind of change that we're looking at now. The learning organization, how do we create organizations in these times that are able to take information in quickly, adapt and evolve? What are the qualities uh, of those kind of organizations? Uh, leadership development and levels of leadership development. How do we come to understand what, uh, what level of leadership development is appropriate for different kinds of contexts? And particularly in a transformational context, what kind of leadership is appropriate there? And then practices that are related to that. So what are really you know, different ways you can go about your leadership um, that are going to stimulate this kind of change? And then bringing it back to you as a potential leader in this context, um, how can you be personally effective and stay resilient in what's gonna be a very chaotic uh, and potentially stressful time? So how do you look after yourself and keep on course to be effective in your work. How do we create the kind of organizational culture that's going to 
stand the test of time, that's, but also going to be able to be adaptive and flexible and respond to unexpected events uh, in society. What are the tools that we can use to create the level of collaboration that's needed to deal with the complexity we're facing? And how do we get a feel for um, different levels of organizational development? So how do we distinguish between what's a, an organization able to deal with more complexity or an organization that's better equipped to deal with less complex contexts and have the maps to be able to read those organizations more effectively? And then given that we're looking to design organizations, particularly in this context, organizations that are agile, ready to evolve and move on quickly, um, how do we create those kind of organizational structures and governance systems that help us uh, to navigate in a dynamic way through turbulent times? And then finally, to explore some of the leading edge practices that are just beginning to emerge uh, in society, right on the edge of our understandings, challenging our current mind mindsets around, around reality, to begin to give us a sense of those, so at least they're on our radar screen um, as we move forward. Now, as we move into the course, one of the things I'd like you to consider and, and, and be aware of is how you respond to the material as it's presented. So there's some things which maybe you'll instantly resonate with and, and go, yeah, I completely get that. There may be other things that you feel some resistance to or uh, feel uncomfortable with. And that's, that's totally fine. So just, but what's important is to notice that because there are, there are, there's material in there that might challenge some of the assumptions you're already holding and that can make us feel uncomfortable. So that's a bit of information for us as you, as you hear things in the course, uh, come or read things in the readings and it, and it disturbs you a bit. Notice when those things happen and just inquire into, I wonder where that's coming from. Don't, don't allow it to, to put you off course, just allow it to be present um, and, and be very conscious of how you're responding to the different material that comes in. Uh, you choose to take a position if you like there will be things you might not agree with, things you will agree with. Make your points in your papers and your assessments. Put your opinions out there. Um, but be continually noticing your own reaction and, and level of engagement um, with the course and share that with others as well so that we get used to making our own experience explicit to the other students and the faculty in the course because that's as, as much a part of the learning experience as just... Um, engaging with the material itself. So uh, I hope you enjoy the course. Um, I'm very much looking forward to engaging with you through the forums and other contexts and to seeing what kind of uh, assignments come out of it. And uh, so take some time to digest this and then we'll be moving on to uh, the second session where we're looking at what does it mean to take an integral approach to um, this topic.